Alrighty, so I'm here today to talk to you about the future of Cedar Fair. This one's extremely easy because Cedar Fair is very vocal and very open about what they're doing in terms of future growth, expansions, where they're going to invest their money, how they're going to invest their money. They're so open that they have a slideshow here for you today uh, made by Cedar Fair. Um, that explains exactly what they plan on doing to grow the business even more. So this is going to be one of the easiest videos I make because it is all coming from Cedar Fair themselves. Um, and then obviously I'm going to give you a little bit of my opinions on things. But nonetheless, on Instagram, um, our account is Amusement Insiders, plural, on Instagram. We asked a question sticker, why do you think Cedar Fair is doing so much better than Six Flags right now? I'm going to read off a couple of these. Um, so a lot of people are saying just overall park management, making quality investments, Six Legs really needs um, a redo of many park entrances, pathways, etc. I can honestly say that Cedar Fair um, could use the same, just to be fair. Um, a lot of people just... <laughs> Uh, some people are saying everything. I disagree with that, um, even though I do think Cedar Fair Parks are much nicer. Um, people are saying Cedar Fair doesn't clone everything, whereas Six Flags tends to clone a lot of their stuff. The business model that Cedar Fair uses is just that much better. The park environment. So that's going to be a big topic of discussion in this slide. Um, Knott's Berry Farm was referenced compared to Six Flags uh, Magic Mountain. The food services. Um, and the rides. I will say that Six Flags does have some amazing rides, especially back in the day. Um, the attendance, the money, and if you compare La Ronde to Wonderland, it's extremely easy. Wonderland's clearly better. That's from someone else, not my opinions, although I would agree. I haven't been to La Ronde yet, but there's no comparison. There's no argument. Um, Cedar Fair doesn't like to build parks in other countries. That is very true. Um, making new partners, making new partnerships with other brands exactly um you're paying for quality at cedar fair money they just have better parks i love how cedar fair just focuses on adding quality attractions because cedar fair is smart with their money because i think they have better business model and six Flags can't start a new park um they just have better parks i love how cedar fair just isn't adding quality attraction i think i just screenshot that twice all right, um, I'm going to get into the slide. Those are just some things that um, people have said on Instagram. But nonetheless, here is the most important slide of the day. This literally tells you exactly what's going on at Cedar Fair. And there's a big change. So a lot of people have been complaining about Cedar Fair not investing in every park every year. Well, guess what? It looks like they heard you. <laughs> the heavens have answered. And every park moving forward is going to get something new every year. So I don't know if this is something entirely new, but this is a promise. This sounds very Six Flags to me. So it'll be interesting to see how Cedar Fair does that. But something new at every park every year. So that is something Cedar Fair is going to be doing. They're going to prioritize, prioritize investments in more immersive guest experiences within the core. So Cedar Fair is an entertainment company now. Huge emphasis on entertainment from shows like live performances, live actors. I'm trying to think of everything they do. You have those all seasons of fun. So they have entertainment events um, through every season, spring, fall, summer, winter. Cedar Fair does it best. Um, and they're focusing on getting all the guests, no matter their age, race, color, um, religion, all of them into the park. So that's something that Cedar Fair is really good at. And honestly, I can tell you from hearing guest reactions at Winterfest at Canada's Wonderland, they nailed it. Lots of people were so impressed with Winterfest at Canada's Wonderland. I was blown away. I was honestly just expecting millions of lights thrown around the park and then just tacky singing here and there. No, no, no. It was much better than that. And honestly, I will always be a returning customer to Winterfest. I know I'm biased because I'm an enthusiast and I love Wonderland. But where I want to point out my unbias is a lot of enthusiasts actually don't like Winterfest. I love Winterfest. I'm a much more well-rounded, like, enthusiast in terms of I love theming. I love entertainment. I love the atmosphere. And I think that's why I honestly have all this love for Cedar Fair. I just love their business model and I love what they're doing with the park. Um, trying to think if there's anything else from this slide. So 
Um, I do want to talk about the fact that Cedar Fair is much more recession proof than Six Flags. So Cedar Fair, in focusing on its American, North American parks, obviously, um, they don't have parks in other parts of the world yet. Um, they are ready for a recession. So they invest in their parks, they build up these season pass sales and these loyal clients with the gold pass. And by the way, we're hearing rumblings that Cedar Point sold 500,000 gold passes. And I'm hearing rumblings that Canada's Wonderland has sold very similar to that. Um, the gold pass is just a huge hit with the offerings that Cedar Fair was offering at the end of the season by a 2020 gold pass. Um, and they were blasting that at Canada's Wonderland. I know they were at Cedar Point too. Buy a 2020 Gold Pass, get into Winterfest and the remainder of this season for free everywhere. Everyone was getting Gold Passes. Like literally, it's all I ever heard, especially at Cedar Point with their Halloween, Halloween weekends event. It was just jam packed. So Cedar Fair is pushing those Gold Passes and it's working. Whereas we're hearing at Six Flags, their memberships are down. Well, it turns out later on in this presentation, Cedar Fair did a study into memberships versus season passes and why the season passes are a much better system than the memberships. And this might be part of the reason as to why Six Flags isn't doing so hot in terms of their memberships and why their membership sales are down and their attendance is down and thus their revenue is down. Um, I do also want to touch that Cedar Point or so not Cedar Point, Cedar Fair is already as of the end of Q3, almost made the same amount of revenue that they did all of last year in 2018. That's insane. So, um, and that's excluding the Schlitterbahn water parks. With the Schlitterbahn water parks, they are exactly where they were. Um, I think they're like 100 million above what they were last year. I'm gonna have to recheck that fact. But nonetheless, they're going to outdo Six Flags in terms of revenue. Um, for the first time ever. So that's crazy with like literally half the amount of parks that Six Flags has for a company to be pulling in the same revenue as um, Six Flags. You know they're doing something right. So some key findings that Cedar Fair has done. So this presentation is all about um, key findings, research that they've done going into the market and asking the guest and then coming back with information and building a business plan. That's what this presentation is, by the way, in front of me. So something for everyone. Consumers are seeking entertainment options that can accommodate all types of people, ages, and interests. Disconnecting to connect. Despite the uh, pervasiveness of technology, people still appreciate simple fun that fosters connection. Consumers are on the hunt for never-before experiences, craving atmosphere, and experiences with the sense of place. So I love how um, they emphasize that. So... Sense of place is something that Cedar Fair is focusing on. You can see it with Frontier Canada, Forbidden Frontier, Ghost Town, um, Alive, I think is what they call it. Not Spare Farm, correct me down below if I made that um, up or if I misnamed that. Consumers are see local as more authentic. Authentic diversity is differentiating. Um, so Cedar Fair is definitely focusing um, on growing their base. So they want... Every age, again, as I said earlier, every age, every race, every religion, just a diverse group of people to be able to go to their parks and be like, oh, I don't have to be here if I don't like roller coasters or like, you know, I want to be here even if I don't like roller coasters. I can go watch the shows, you know, I can drop my like teenage family members off and then go watch and do some entertainment options at the park. That's what they're going after. And they're looking for these never before seen experiences like Ghost Town Alive, Forbidden Frontier. You're going to see that popping up at all the major parks, I can already tell. Um, but they're trying to broaden the guest experience with uh, more visits from existing guests and incremental visits from new guests. So they're trying to draw on those new guests again, as I've just been talking about. Um, they're expanding the season pass program, increase to market penetration through targeted marketing efforts. We're seeing that. There's Winterfest had advertisements on buses, um, they did the push notifications for upgrade your day ticket today uh, into a season pass for the lowest price possible um, and the pursue adjacent development. So this is a huge thing with Cedar Fair. They are going to be developing their adjacent lands um, with hotels, sports venues. Um, and we're going to get into that a little bit further down the slide. 
But to get back into the immersive experiences, Cedar Fair is going to be offering guest immersive experiences like the Grand Carnival, Ghost Town Alive, so I did get it right, um, and then Winterfest, Forbidden Frontier, and then the Monster Jam. So these are very diverse um, immersive experiences that Cedar Fair is offering. They've been expanding them out to their other parks, and it's just working really well for them. We're hearing that Grand Carnival had like a similar draw in attendance to building a roller coaster. That Winterfest has a similar draw in attendance to building a roller coaster. So these are very, uh, to enthusiasts, that's not something you want to hear, but these are really good things to hear for a company like Cedar Fair. You know that building, investing in something cheaper than a roller coaster is drawing in the same amount of crowds. So entertainment is definitely a route that Cedar Fair is going to want to pursue because it's making the money and it's bringing in the gas and it's creating that diverse um, atmosphere where the whole family is going to want to visit, not just maybe the mom and kids or the two teenagers that live in that household. You're going to want the grandparents, the father, the mother, and all the kids of the family are going to be able to visit. So food and beverage is playing a key role. Obviously, Canada's Wonderland, please listen. No shade, but just please listen to this. Or when is Cedar Fair going to invest in food? I know that in my video it's coming, but Cedar Fair is investing in better restaurants, um, more diversity in restaurants, indoor places to go sit down and eat because of changing weather patterns. It's getting colder. It's getting warmer. It's getting more wet. Uh, <laughs> I know that doesn't make sense, but that is exactly what's happening. Um, that is a huge decline on attendance for a lot of parks. And Cedar Fair is trying to build more indoor attractions like dark rides, indoor restaurants, um, and stuff like that. But um, definitely love what Cedar Point has done with uh, upgrading their restaurants. And I can't wait to see what other parks do. From what I understand, Knott's Berry Farm and Cedar Point definitely have the best restaurants and food. I've heard Kings Island has some really good food too. But um, I'll have to check that out when I go there. Canada's Wonderland, mm -mm, waiting, 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 waiting. <laughs> this season pass payment plan. I don't know why I didn't understand what SP stood for. I had to literally think really hard there for a second. And the loyalty program meet objectives. So the Cedar Fair season pass program um, is a two-tier program now. So they're linking in a loyalty program and a payment plan into their Cedar Fair season pass. And they set it up right here to compare it to a subscription model. Um, and it just doesn't work for Cedar Fair based off of this. Now, I don't know if Cedar Fair is ever going to pursue a subscription model because they did talk um, at the beginning of the quarter. So Q1 about maybe trying it out somewhere. But it definitely looks like they did their research and it just doesn't fit into their lineup. A lot of people have been asking me what's going on with the hotel at Canada's Wonderland. Well, it has been delayed due to the neighbors next to Canada's Wonderland, blah, 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 complain, complain, complain. Um, but everything's been sorted out and it now has a targeted opening of Q2 in 2021 with 140 rooms um, adjacent to Canada's Wonderland. So this is one of those adjacent projects um, that have been developed, uh, that they're working on. So it is still going forward. I know a lot of people were like, why didn't you include that in the future of Canada's Wonderland? It completely um, slipped my mind because I just assumed that everyone knows about it or doesn't care about it. But here it is. The hotel at Canada's Wonderland is happening. Spring Hill Suites at Carowinds did open up already. So that is opened. Uh, ours was supposed to open same time, but it has just been, been delay after delay. Nonetheless, this is what Cedar Fair has to offer for the future. And honestly, I couldn't be more excited and more impressed. They are recession proof. They're going to be building rides and attractions at every single one of their parks um, every year. I said rides and attractions, but that includes restaurants and shows and entertainment as well. But every park is going to be getting something new every year. Very six flags, but I'm very interested to see how Cedar Fair does it. I know that Cedar Fair is doing exceptionally well. They've been paying down their debt now. They've been putting money aside to buy future um, properties. So again, uh, from what I understand from their um, presentation is they have around 250 something million dollars set aside um, and they're going to be saving up money and more money uh, to purchase other parks. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this quick presentation or I shouldn't say quick, it's 15 minutes, this presentation on the future of Cedar Fair. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't and share this video for others to enjoy. Comment down below what you would like to see me do future of next. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. Bye.